Good morning, Insurance Syndicate Group. It is that time. It is August 15th, 10.30 a.m., and you are in for a treat on another episode of Ask the Experts. And we have a very special guest and a friend of mine, Mr. Mike Schill. We met back in the Grant Cardone days, uh, same where I met Andy, and we had Cardone University on their platform. And both of these guys were just absolute legends. Uh, Mike absolutely crushed it over Grant Cardone's and then went on as the founder of Full Circle Agency, one of Miami's fastest growing retention marketing and advertising firms. He's an ex executive producer of Breckel Drive, executive producer of Surviving Leonard Documentary, executive producer of the Leonard movie, and one of the top producers for Grant Cardone, responsible for, get ready for this, folks, $75 million in sales. He was a formal D1 college athlete at the great state of Florida University. Allow me to welcome Mr. Mike Schill. Welcome to the show. What's going on, man? Man, I'll tell you what, you're firing me up. I'm ready to, I'm ready to, yeah, I'm ready yeah, to go yeah. out there right now, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you for having no, me. No, no, thanks for being on. I think we got some real exciting talking today. We're going to be talking about, um, you know, really like that championship mindset because you came from the yeah. world of athletics and that's where you start. And I think a lot of those mm -hmm. principles and those mindsets is what carried over into business. And that's, you know, similar story to what happened for me. So we're going to talk about that elite mindset, you know, going from the athletic world into the business world and how that carried over and then talking right. about networking um, and just really expanding your network. Cause we all know, uh, show me your network and I'll show you your net worth. So it's the people yeah. that we surround ourselves with that are going to elevate us and get us to where we got to go. Show me your closest five friends and I'll show you your future. All those sayings. We're going to be talking about that today. And uh, we'll get we'll get into the we'll get into the first first question here, but yeah. when it comes to uh, building a successful agency, you know the full circle agency in Miami, one of the fastest growing retention marketing and advertising firms. Can you share some of the key strategies and philosophies that contributed to the rapid growth of success? And then maybe you know what it was like transitioning from where you were to where you went, and you know how that's going. Yeah, totally, totally. And again, for everybody who's in this thing, I appreciate you. Humbled at the opportunity to be in front of you and excited to have a, an effective conversation that my intention is is, is hopefully to, to move the needle in whatever it is that you got going on. So so gracious for that. As far as the effective strategies that we have for the Full Circle Agency and, 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 and when getting started into it, you know, the first things first, we, we, knew, we, we, we knew we were good at what it is we we wanted to do and retention for those who don't know email text loyalty and subscription for medium to large size product based brands working with massive organizations like ebay lines not cheap acubo tectonic lights all kimber uh the, the list goes on and on but when, when you're first starting out and when you're first getting indoctrinated into something new you need to have proof of concept right we were always told and, and andy may know this right to the degree you are sold you will sell we knew we were sold on ourselves, but we did not know, right? Or we did not have any, any, any results to justify how confident we were in the marketplace, even though we knew we could perform at an optimal level. So when, when we're making that transition, first things first was, was, was to get one, one individual to say yes, to get one big time organization to go ahead and give us a shot. And to be quite frankly with you, we couldn't charge them max price point right away. And we honestly thought it was unethical to charge a max price point right away. We knew that being able to work with somebody at a high level, a multi, 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 hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue every single year, and just having that under our belt and being able to understand that was more important, way more important than charging somebody max price. So that's what happened when we got in the lines, not cheap, first things first, right? We went into the deal. We knew we could deliver. We delivered on that. And then our philosophy was, okay, now that we got some proof in the pudding, not for ourselves, but for the marketplace, because no one 
will transact with somebody who doesn't have a resume. Nobody. Yep. Not even your mom. Not even your mom, right? Yeah. So, 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 so I'm gonna talk that. that. And actually, when I first started <laughs> my business, it took me a while to win over my mom. So I was like, it, I didn't it, get her for six months. It. <laughs> it, it's, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. But can you can you can, can you blame her? Right? Can you blame her? So so we got that. Then it was okay. Now we understand. Now we understand how how to how to effectively communicate with high level businesses and how to deliver at an optimal level. Okay. Now let's branch out. Now we can use that and propel that to the next client and the next client and the next client. Now, of course, we're running ads. We're using uh, LinkedIn. Um, we're, we're on the phone and cold calling. We're using uh, personal brands and social media. But that first big time sale, hey, I'm going to tell you right now, it was difficult. But it wasn't the most, the, the, the biggest result from it wasn't the sale. It was the, the momentum that came after the fact. That's oh huge. That's huge. You I love right. that. I love that. And I want to do a follow-up question there too. And I'll let you take the next question there, Andy. But it's like, you know, when you got some of these big brands, when I hear about Lions Not Sheep, eBay, some of these big brands, and then starting out, right? When you start out, you know, I think Grant says this the best, right? Attention, yeah. you know, where where our uh, uh, where our attention goes, energy flows, and attention is yeah. one of the biggest currencies on the planet. So how did you get the attention of some of these big brands that allowed you to engage with them and start doing business and serving some of the, you know, the biggest brands uh, on the planet? Yeah. Well, that goes into the previous organization that we were all part of, man, and, and your, your ability to understand sales. You know, sales is anything. Sales is number one. Sales is a form of, uh, of accumulation of attention. If you're not doing it every single day, well, then your, your business will fail, you know, and in the way that we were getting attention, because we, we listen, even though we have a couple of things figured out, like I, I, I want, I want, I want Google, I want, I want Coca-Cola, like I want, I want massive brand, like we still have a ton more to grow, but the intention is picking up the phone and down. The intention is, 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 is leveraging social media. The attention is reaching out via email. The attention is to show up at somebody's office. The attention is to never, ever, 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 ever stop. Because you only make one drop in a bucket with one outreach. So I love that. graciously, graciously by the man above, we, we, we came from an organization where we, where we learned, even when you don't have that, that, that physical presence and you're not a household name, we, we were able to understand and we were taught how to break into big time organizations, big time organizations. So it yeah, takes all, a lot all of those drip, All those drops and those drips in the bucket, you know, they add up over time, day after day after day. You might look down, hey, it's nothing but a drip. It's nothing but a drop. But all of a sudden, a week later, after dripping and dropping every single day, every single day, all of a sudden, it's mm -hmm. maybe a little bit more full. And then you look at it one day, it might be six months out, a year out, and you got a full bucket that's overflowing. And I think, yes. you know, that that's really the compounded effect of even showing up in a small way every single day mm -hmm. and being consistent. I think that's where a lot of people miss the mark. Right, right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you're not going to see results right away. And hey, listen, yeah. there's still people that I'm trying to close right now that I've been I've been following up for for two years. OK, <laughs> amen. Amen. So what? You know, so what? I want to I want to pull something out here because uh, for those of you who who aren't aware of of Mike and his career, um, I first met Mike sitting in a cubicle making about three hundred cold calls a day, getting our teeth beat in, and I said this guy's built different. the The level of discipline that you brought in, um, you just kind of seem to zone out the distractions. And I saw like whatever this guy did before this career built him different. And come to find, I was like. Oh, he played some college football. Little did I know that you were under the tutelage of an um, amazing coach. You guys won a national championship in D1, mm -hmm. which very few people have accomplished. And I'm sure that you went through a transition within your athletic career where you you had setbacks and then you had the proper coaching and things to mold you, um, to build you different. Now, a lot of the audience here hasn't experienced that type of a program where they've gone through and, and performed at that level but I was wondering if you could share some of the biggest lessons that transformed you in the athletic world, performing at a high level that yeah. have now transitioned and allowed you to overcome difficulties, succeed at a high level of business. And what I'm looking to do is like, I, I know it's like cheating you out of your career, man. <laughs> I'm trying to have people be able to steal, take from you. What's a lesson that you took from the D1 world that's transitioned to business that isn't going to take somebody enrolling at FSU 
going and training for four years, winning a national <laughs> championship that they can pull from your career now in their business without having to go through all that that you went through. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. No, I got you. I got you. So, so you know, the biggest thing, the biggest thing, the biggest thing, I'll, I'll never, ever, ever forget it. I remember it like it was yesterday. I knew, okay, listen, coming out of high school, we were good. Coming out of high school, you know, I was, I was, I was, I was, you know, I was, I was a decent athlete in a multitude of different assets, man. I, I, a multitude of different ways, man. I'm talking from Taekwondo and potentially going to the Olympics to going to state in like four different, four different events for sports. Like, like easy, very easy. But I'll never forget this. We're running, a, we're running gasters. We're running gasters like the second day. That's from goal line to goal line. There's a guy by the name of Patrick Robinson who went on to play a uh, cornerback for the, um, for the, the 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 Saints for about nine or ten years, we we stand on the line, right? It, it, it it's just a sprint from goal line to goal line, and I thought I was fast. No, no, no. Let's rephrase that, folks. I'm fast, and I'll probably race any single person on this thing and beat them. But there's another level. There's another degree, and we took off. And I went into one gear, and he went into the same gear, and I went to another gear, and he went to the same gear, and then I went to another gear, and that was the only other gear that I had. And Buddy had about three more gears on me. Took it up two more notches and just separated on me like I wasn't even moving. That's when everything clicked for me, right? And why do I say that when you ask me that question? What Florida State did as far as athletics is concerned and allowed for me to realize that in order to raise the bar, you have to be around people who raise, who force you to raise the bar. And, and what I mean by that is team. If it, the, the power of team is everything. Like one person being good is great. Two people being great is so much more effective. But three people being great where one person pushes the other two to the next level, that's the game over. That's the game over deal. So of course, the importance of team, right? And I know it's, I know it's, I know it's probably a redundant thing that you hear out there, but the, listen, a Pop Warner coach it's probably not going to be the same coach that gets you to win a national championship in the national championship winning coach. And we see it all the time. Doesn't even last the season in the NFL. There, there, there's different levels of people for different levels of things. And you need to understand, you need to attach yourself to another level. If you want to take yourself to another, another level, that's the, that's the first thing. That's the first thing. The second thing is training. I thought I trained a lot. You know, I thought I trained a lot, and I did train a lot in high school. We were running with Team Jamaica. Like, half the people ran in the Olympics. Like, we were running, throwing up every single day, repeat 400s, repeat 200s, like that death stuff that you see on, on like, the, the Sprint Netflix series. But then I got to, I got to Fort State, and, and, and the training was on, on, on a whole other level, man. We were doing things that I'd never even seen before in my entire life, right? And then that coupled with <laughs> time management, man. You know, which I know we'll get into as far as the transition after sports into the real world and maybe some of those difficulties. But I'll tell you what, for the first 25, 26 years of my life, I've had a schedule that's been given to me from 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 the moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep. That's a that's a pro and a con. Right. But in this stage, as far as college was concerned and then in business, that's a that's a that's a pro. There was nothing. There was no time that I didn't know where I needed to be or what I had to do. And there was no area of the day where there wasn't someone watching. And so when you can, when you can couple those things, a massive team, massive training and time management, which are so simple, yet very, 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 very hard to do. I mean, how many people on this live, including myself, um, lost track of time today, this morning, or are five minutes behind anticipated schedule that they hope to be at this time last night it happens all the time those who control that win and i think too um you know piggybacking on that is success in operational excellence leaves clues Mm -hmm. right and that could be Mm -hmm. those parallels could be they don't necessarily have to be business to business parallels but you know i'd be curious when you look at you know where you came from at florida state university what were those core fundamentals that became parallel that carried over into business? Mm. And what I mean by that, when when you were engulfed in the culture of one of the greatest sports teams, arguably in in mm. in the country, you know, what did that culture look like? The framework look like? The insistence and the persistence on excellence look like? And then which of those 
nuggets that tied to success, that tied to operational excellence, and you say, hey, you know what? This worked over here in sports, but this could work over here in business too, where if I took that same culture and I embedded it with my team around these core principles that I could emulate the level of excellence that I saw at Florida State University inside of Mike Schill University in your company. Yeah, great question. Listen, two things come to mind immediately. Health is everything. Yep. And get your workout in first thing in the day. Love that. It's crazy. It, it, it really is. It really is wild. But this health game is everything. I saw and we saw. Listen, we had nutritionists. We had, we had individuals who would, who, would, who would watch our diets and so on and so forth. And I immediately saw, I immediately saw the profound impact that health changed effective performance during the day, both on and off the field. And when I changed the health, and I'm talking about, you know, we're, we're, we're kids, you know, you're 18, you're 19, you're 20, you're 21. Like you're, you're at that, 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 that prime state. Even at that state, right? That, that 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 makes a huge, huge, huge difference. And then, and then this, getting the weightlifting in in the morning, getting the sprinting done in the morning, so you can do game film and study at night, as opposed to the opposite way. Hmm. That was everything. When I changed that, and when we changed that as an organization, when we changed that as a culture, when, listen, Bobby, I was there when Bobby Bowden was there, but when Jimbo Fisher came in, it was a whole nother level. It was a whole nother level, and those were two things that he preached on. Another thing that is very, very important important is have the target in front of you and touch it every day. Love that. So there was a sign. There was a sign. There was a sign. You walk out of the I, I can see it right now. You walk out of the, the locker room and it's just saying win a natty, win a natty. And everybody had to hit it. If there was a GA that would stand by the sign, and if people didn't hit the sign, you had to run after practice for like 35 minutes to an hour. Everybody had to hit the sign. Every single person had to hit the sign. And, so you got to see it. It's got to be up. It's got to be And I think you know the why behind that too. I love that. But I think the why behind that, a lot of people don't realize, like, eh, you know, well, Mike can do it. I don't, you know, I don't need to do that. Or I, I'm not a workout kind of guy. I think what they don't realize though is like when, when, when you get that diet dialed in and not everybody has to be a bodybuilder, but it's doing yeah. it for the right reasons, right? You got that diet dialed in and you're getting that workout every day. I know for me, what it does is it creates momentum. I feel good. My mind is sharper. So I'm coming in like at a different level instead of just operating in the lens of average and the force of average, I'm operating like here, but I feel like I'm starting my day in a state of flow, you know, in that flow state that carries momentum. So now, you know what I even found, even though that the winds are in the realm of my health. So every morning I get up, I spend time with my family because Mm -hmm. I have a 1% rule. So every single day in order to stay balanced, I want to get 1% better in my health. I want to get 1% better in my wealth. I want to get 1% better in my family life and 1% better in my faith because too often, you know, I've gone a hundred miles an hour down one rabbit hole, ignored the rest, and it creates this imbalance. But when we're just taking small targets and creating momentum in other areas of life, what I found is you might be getting momentum in your faith. You might be getting momentum in your health, but what it does is it creates this profound ripple effect into those other core pillars. And it's Mm -hmm. all kind of, I guess, synergistic where it's fueling one another and it creates that flow state. So I love that about, um, I love that about what you said, but I just wanted to clarify that because I think a lot of people look at it. Well, Hey, that's not for me. Hey, I like to live and eat a good meal. Well, is it really living if you're, you know, you're all of a sudden you got 30% less energy coming in to lead your team and you're feeling lethargic. Is it really winning if uh, it takes you two, three hours to start your day and start Mm -hmm. to get some momentum. So by the time the momentum start the day, you're almost ready to punch out at maybe five, six o'clock, like some of these folks are because momentum picked up at 3 p.m. And and, 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 and one other thing I'll say to that, what that is, that momentum is just another form of accountability. When you're doing the right thing in the morning, it kind of deters you from doing the wrong thing in the afternoon because you reflect back on the morning. How you do one thing, how you do everything. That's going to trickle over you know that's the discipline and effect to everything. I love it. For real. And then holding each other accountable too. Cause I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Dave, there was a time when Mike came over and we did like a late night study session. It's like 10, 11, <laughs> let's eat, let's eat a big meal. Let's hang out on the computers and train together. And we had just had our son and I wasn't working out. And Mike's like, you working out? I'm like, no, not right now. He's like, dude, do you, do you really want to not keep up with your son? Like, <laughs> I don't, he looked at me like I was crazy. And at that moment I was like, he literally thinks I'm crazy right now. Not because not working out wasn't healthy. It's because he's like, 
you just had a son, like you want the energy for him. So your point, Dave, about the ripple effect is like, he looked at it as like a ripple effect, like how good of a father I can be, let alone like mm. running. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, he, and here's the, here's the exciting thing about it. We live in a world that's more average now than ever. You know what that means? <laughs> There is more opportunity than there ever was because to be in the realm of the 1% today, as opposed to what it was yesterday and, mm -hmm. you know, the day before that, it's so much easier. Like all you got to do, like you just follow that 1% rule, you show up and just get 1% better in your health, 1% better in your wealth, 1% better in your faith, 1% better, you know, when it comes to your family, the compounded effect of that, you know, how does a 401k add up in you know, mm. build that sizable retirement for you, right? It compounds. Yeah. But if you do that for six months straight, I guarantee you that anybody that shows up, especially in the world we live in today, where the force of average being as strong as it is today, and just try to get 1% better in every core area, it might not seem much, but you'll look back in six months and you will mm -hmm. be completely transformed as a different freaking human. And I can guarantee you, you're going to be living among the 1% of the 1% in, in, in this world because it's easier now more than ever. Totally, totally take advantage of it. That's what, I, that's what I'm looking to do every day. For sure, man. Every day. Cool. Uh, Mike, I want to ask you a question um, based on kind of watching you over the years. Uh, something you did in Miami that really stood out to me is you made regular time to literally go out to networking events, uh, oh, masterminds. Um, you'd walk up to a guy at a coffee shop and compliment him on his hat and start a conversation. Oh, your hat says you're a billionaire. What do you do? I remember that. And yeah. when I look back at that at the time, I had a bunch of excuses, just being honest for like, I don't have time for that. You know, I'm just going to put my core time into marketing, a phone call. But then I saw your network expand and I would consider you to be like an elite networker. You're very good at networking. I'd like for you to maybe help some of the audience members who want to get into networking or they don't understand that game. Understand what, what's changed in your life since you took networking very seriously. What opportunities has that opened up? What mistakes did you make? Like just an, an overall like 30,000 foot view. I'd love to understand your mindset on it. Listen. Listen, 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 listen. This, 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 this networking game is, is, is honestly everything. And uh, what I will say is this. When you're in front of somebody, you can't expect for that somebody to deliver what it is that you want them to deliver on right then and there. Because a relationship can be a one-time thing or it can be everlasting, right? And I know that when I talk to people, right? And you get in front of people and you engage with people that where they're currently at now may not be where they're currently at or where they where they're soon to be at in 10 years perfect example guys i mean for those who don't know i'm an executive producer of a movie that's absolutely crushing it on on, on four streaming platforms and now we're dropping a documentary august 24th again on amazon prime that that came that came from a salesperson in networking with the salesperson and fostering relationship with the salesperson four and a half years ago that eventually led into the introduction of a producer because they knew my targets and goals because I was able to deliver a simple deal to them, right? Everybody knows, I write it down every single morning, right? I got, I got, I got to get to Tyler Perry. I got to get to that Jay-Z level as far as, as, far as the, 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 the media and, and the entertainment space. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm doing it literally right now as we speak. But, but, but it, 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 it's simple, simple meet and greets followed by constant follow-up, not to ask somebody for something, but to just to check up on somebody and, and, and see where they're at, right? Like that is the game. That is the game. And as you, as you expand and as you get into new rooms, brother, the opportunities, the opportunities are endless. Now you're not talking to the Joe Schmoes. Now you're talking to the people that, to the people that, the people that are, are the bosses of the Joe Schmoes. Right? Absolutely. And, and I, I can't ask them for anything because that would be unethical, but watch out because <laughs> making drops in the bucket. That's it. hundred percent. And I think it's, it's too, it's like how you make those drops in the bucket too. Cause I think there's a lot of people that'll go out to <clears throat> networking events and conferences and they don't get the same impact that you're getting when building those relationships. It's the same reason why everybody in America has one of these phones and it's doing one of two things. It's either serving you in a way because we have, more information, access, and knowledge than ever that we can gain and use to our benefit into this world, 
But you could also choose this device to take away energy from you and mindlessly scroll into it over and over again. And I think it's the same way when it goes out to networking events. I see so many people, they're going there with the wrong intention. They're going there because they haven't saw success in their business yet, which gives you that awesome euphoria and dopamine hit like you're winning. But they get into that networking environment, talking with other people that are maybe not winning, but talking about winning, and it simulates that dopamine hit, right? So now mm-hmm. they start to substitute going to these events for winning, in it's counterintuitive. Ooh. And that's why I always recommend to people is you got to have great intention to go to these events. And that's where I came up with my rule of three to keep it simple for people when it goes to networking events, masterminds, and everything else. You go there. And find three people that you can serve because I'm a big believer. If you help another enough people get to where they want to go in life, you're never mm-hmm. going to have to worry about your destination. And you're always plying in your place in a, in a state of servitude. Find three people that are on your level that are doing like similar things. They got like similar skill sets, but they might have opposite strengths and weaknesses. And you guys can help one another get to the top of the summit together. And then the last piece is, is find three people that make you freaking uncomfortable. They make you feel inadequate. They make you feel like you're not enough because it's those people that you're going to learn, learn a thing or two about a thing or two, and they're going to help you grow. But if you follow that rule of three, you're always in a place of service. You're always in a place of collaboration with other people, getting to where you want to go in an accelerator great. And you're always in a place of growth every single time. And the compound effect of doing that of every event over and over and over again will change your network and it will change your life. Totally. totally. Hey, listen, perfect example, Aspire event. We're backstage. There's an oil tycoon from China. This guy barely even speaks English, right? He's sitting by himself, sitting by himself. I knew he was a whale. I mean, you just know. Oh, it. yeah, you know. And, and, and you just know it. And, but still very modest, very chill. We connect, sat down with him. <laughs> He's talking about stuff that doesn't even make sense to me. I'm not in my head. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. That's great. <laughs> we, exchange, we exchange information. We're connected on LinkedIn. Right. That was that was four months ago. He's going to be back here in Miami. One of the first people he reached out to was myself back in Miami. We'll go grab a coffee again. I know for a fact that I cannot necessarily bring him an oil well right now. Like he is at a level that is at just so, 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 so superior. Like it just is what it is. But I also know that time's always going. And I'm always getting better. And there will be a time where I can do one thing for him. And just just to piggyback off what you said, going to servitude, I guarantee I'm going to know that guy for life. And I guarantee in some way, shape, or form in the next 25 years, him and I will do some sort of business. And it'll all stem from this guy sitting by himself and nobody else was talking to him. And I saw him out the corner of my eyes and said, bro, this guy, this, shit, this guy owns the building. Why is nobody talking to him? It's just, oh, it's no, just crazy. It's crazy. And then before we go on to the next question, I'll leave one other thing there too. And I learned this from a mentor of mine, Dan Fleischman, and how to get incredibly oh. strategic and tactical and bring it to like the next level. Like he was telling me that what he'll do is go as far as mapping out the room or the environment before he gets there, knowing who's going to get there, where they're going to sit and where they're going to be. And he's like, you know, what I try to do is either get a seat by the door because I know everybody's got to leave in and out every time they're coming into that room or a seat by the bathroom, because at least three times during the night, they're going to have to go into the bathroom and out of the bathroom. And what that's going to do is create a strategic moment where they have to pass me and catch eye contact and then build a relationship. Or if I know they're going to be sitting here in the room and I can get in there first and make sure that, Hey, in that specific room, while everybody else is searching for the dopamine hit, I'm strategically taking my chess piece and placing it next to the king or the queen. And that Mm -hmm. way there, I'm getting alignment with my assignment where I'm looking to go. And now there's going to be a high probability. I took that and, you know, I was on a a plane with uh, Dave Meltzer and Dane Cook and a private mastermind, you know, and I like remembered that in the back of my mind. And I literally sat there by the side of the plane, waited for everybody to board. And then when Dane and Dave went up, I was like, boop, I went right up and (laughs) both on the plane there. On the way back, you know, I got to spend two, three hours with Dane Cook and Dave Meltzer that were there. And then we actually built relationships, have cell phone numbers exchanged. And now we're good friends all about that strategic intention. So I think you you can like, if you start, stop thinking about playing checkers and start thinking about how do I play chess in all aspects of life. 
because I, I think that not only can complement like when you go all in, because I think people will look at, I can build a business by going all in and being a maniac and running hard. Well, yeah, that'll take you so far, right? That'll bring you some momentum. But I think then it becomes bringing the smarts into it, bringing the strategy into it that magnifies and amplifies that momentum in a profound way. Oh, man. Oh, man. Hey, what one, one thing I'll say for everybody, hey, one, one thing that works for anybody who's, you know, I know the the big uh, audiences in the insurance space and so on and so forth. We got agency owners. We got we got we got agents and whatnot. I did this at Cardone's. Andy knows. Listen, as opposed to walking to your desk when you walk in the door, walk past where all the executive offices are and then walk to your desk. I did that every single day. No one else would do that. People were afraid to walk on that side of the office. I did it every single day. Everybody would ask, "Why are you doing that?" And then two years later. When I'm on somebody's jet and you're not. Huh, yeah, yep. and you know what I just heard there? <laughs> if you do things differently than everybody's always done, yeah. you're going to get results like nobody has ever gotten. Uh, but what do we got yeah. everybody doing? They're trying to do the same old thing of the same old that everybody else is doing. And it's like yeah. get in the line and like wondering why the results just start to dilute, 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 dilute. Well, it's because you're putting yourself in a sea of competition. But when you do what you just did there and you do the things that people aren't willing to do, and that could be in your behaviors in life, that could be in your business, that could be in your health, that could be how you show up with your family, your wife and your kids. That could be, you know, any mm -hmm. important thing of life. Like it's going to put you in a different realm where again, you're getting results like nobody's ever gotten. But what I found when you do that, you know, especially in business, like you don't got competition no more because if mm. nobody's doing the things that you're doing and you're going out there and doing it, all you got to do is find yourself a damn big megaphone and shout that out. And eventually you're going to have a lot of evangelists that are going out there and they're sharing your message and sharing your brand for you because they know nobody else can get what you got. Totally. Totally. Yeah, and I think when you first do it, like you're going to hear noise, right? You're going to hear criticizers. Mm -hmm. If you're doing a big, like, I, oh, I, you know, you're doing a good job. I'm a big emailer. <laughs> um, when I send 50,000 emails a day, you better believe I hear from somebody like, stop emailing me, you know, go jump off a bridge, some pretty negative stuff. And when I first started to push out there, you know, I, I took that as a sign. Maybe I should stop. You know, I'd sit there and fluster all night. Am I doing the right thing? And now having done that for years and years and years, it's like the louder that noise gets, it's actually like a positive indicator. I'm actually heading in the right direction and I'm actually creating noise in the marketplace. So I think like we're probably on this call kind of beyond that point. But oh, no, for sure. And that's a great point, Andy. And I think, you know, you look at the world that we're in now, right? Like we're in this world that's like entitlement. We're in this world like I deserve a trophy. We're in this world where yeah. like everything should be handed and given to me. So what would be more offensive than showing up in the lens of real personal American excellence in the greatest country on earth and live in the freaking dream? Because they're teaching the opposite of it, that I should get it. I should be entitled to it. I don't have to work for it. So when they see somebody showing up and getting the getting those things, like it, it becomes this hate. It becomes this envy. It becomes that. And, and I share that just for the sheer reason that you can't let that deter you. You have to understand that that mm -hmm. is going to be part of the process. Like if you choose to put yourself into that lane where you want to live like nobody else has ever lived before, well, you're going to get hate and you're going to get envy. You're going to get all those different things thrown at you, not by everybody, but there's going to be a 30%. And that's why I learned, you know what? You can't people please. You can't please everybody. And in the ultimate pursuit of your goals, your dreams, your excellence, where you want to be. And then even, you know, when it comes to our country where we see like the truth, the truth in righteousness and what is good being manipulated and rebranded. Yeah. What was once good is now evil. Once was what evil is now good. In pursuit of that truth, I've even found that people are perpetually offended by the truth. And you're going to get 30% haters at least just by speaking the truth that people don't want to hear. And that's why there's a sign behind me that says facts over feelings, baby, because the facts are what matters in <laughs> the feelings. You know what? It, it, at the end of the day, facts don't have room for feelings. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Mike drop. <laughs> Mike, um, transitioning here, because I know we've got about uh, 20, 25 minutes left with you. Yeah, we're good. One of the things that really strikes me about the full circle agency, right, is that when you see marketing agencies and firms, 
a lot of them sort of pride themselves on like, hey, we're going to blow up your calendar. We're going to, you know, get you a ton of new business. But you've taken this approach of like retention based marketing. And, you know, for those of you who don't who don't understand what retention marketing is, can you just real quick break down how do you define retention marketing? And then how could that apply into the world of somebody who's on here that, let's say, owns a agency, right? And they've got a certain number yeah. of thousand policies in force. What, what can be done in the world of insurance to integrate retention marketing? First of all, I love insurance. Love insurance, love the industry, love the space. We're about to make a massive splash in insurance. I'm not gonna tell you what that looks like, but you're about to see our names all over the place too in the insurance space. So I love it. As far as what retention is, Retention, retention is keeping somebody who's currently been introduced and indoctrinated into your ecosystem, continuing to buy, right? Like, like, like utilizing the data that it is that you have and focusing on the data that it is that you have to milk everything you possibly can out of it, but you're doing it in a very ethical fashion. As it relates to insurance, we all know that open enrollment is coming around the corner, right? It's about to be, listen, it's about to be your time. It's about to be your time and, and you better, you better, you better go. But what, what happens a year from now in, in, in two years from now in three years from now, when these people are up to renew a policy and they can go with you or they can go with another provider, another courier, what, what happens then? What happens then? Are you going to be that agent that calls them every single nine months just to check in on them? And they know when you do that, that the only reason why it is that you're doing that is to extend their policy or to, to get it for another year, get it for another year, maybe add something onto it if they have a child, if you add a policy rider, whatever the hell it is, or are you staying in front of them on a consistent basis, month over month over month, and not necessarily having you call, but maybe they're a part of a, a newsletter, or maybe they're a part of a, a Zoom call for, for all people of, of, of life or health, whatever it is, Tell them the best practices or retirement strategies or, or policy leverage um, um, strategies, whatever that is, and continue to provide them with value so they continue to come back. Listen, in the insurance space in particular, retention is the only way to completely crush the marketplace and make sure that your book is at an all-time high because we know, we know yes, you can, you, can, you can capture funds on the front end, but when you, and bro, that residual, that book transfer, if you're not a captive agent, oh, Lord, have mercy, bro. Your, your son's son's sons can take on that book. But you got to know how to keep those people in the game, bro. Like that get retention and insurance, there is no retention insurance. Yep. That's why it's so easy. And I got an alternate perspective shift there, too. Like, I'll ask yeah. this question. And, you know, how effective of a father could you be? If you only showed up on your son or daughter's birthday and then you don't see him again till next year, probably I mean, probably not all that effective. And you're probably not <laughs> going to build that sort of a relationship, that father daughter bond by any stretch of the imagination. Well, how can no. you possibly expect in your business that you show up once a year on open enrollment? Oh, here I am trying to get your money. Uh, here's me. And I'm going to do better than everybody else did. But where have they been all year round? So like mm -hmm. the key is, what do you do there to nurture that relationship with your son or daughter? Like you're showing up in the important moments. You're bringing value into their life. You're doing things and planting seeds into your son and daughter to grow up and be an amazing human. And then in the process, you're building this incredible bond that becomes inseparable. Well, the same thing, the same way you raise a baby, you raise a kid. It's the same way you raise a business, right? You got to treat mm -hmm. that customer with the same thing where you're showing up in important moments. You're adding value into their life. Without you, they wouldn't be better off. As a matter of fact, they would be worse off without having you in your life. And when you do that, and now when it comes around time, the AKA, the birthday, the renewal, and now you mm -hmm. go to that have that conversation, I feel like there's an understanding and then there's a need for reciprocity to take place and they can't see anybody else to do business with the same way your child wouldn't see anybody else ever to be their dad. Mm. Mm. Listen, they got to do it anyways. It's just a matter of are they going to sign up with you or are they going to sign up with somebody else because of somebody else showed up? Yeah. Yeah. And it's all about <laughs> it's putting in the work, right? It's building yeah. that relationship. It's putting in the work. You can be lazy and be like, oh, I did it. Open enrollment sucks. I can't sell it. Well, it's because you don't work until like once a year 
when it's open mm-hmm. enrollment time and then you start knocking on everybody's door and you decided to get to work and you were back chilling on the couch the nine months before that. It wasn't the lead sucked. It wasn't the fact that no. hey, your product sucks. It wasn't the fact that your prospects suck. You might, if you're wondering what sucks, you might need to look in the mirror. And I don't mean that to any other way than I look in the mirror and ask myself that question all the time. It's all about extreme ownership and responsibility when it comes to everything in life. And if you own everything that's a problem, well, guess what? You're going to figure out a way to own the solution to that same problem. But if you keep passing the buck, keep passing the buck, keep passing the buck, well, that's all you're going to be doing the rest of your career. The gospel of D. Will, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling it flow to me today from a higher power. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, Mike, what I, I'm curious, we ask a lot of our guests on here about AI um, because obviously it's, oh, yeah. it's changing the landscape. And, and I don't want to leave you out of that conversation because I know you're always pushing the needle. Um, being kind of at the forefront in the marketing space. Um, how yeah. have you seen AI is helping people retain customers specifically? I know there's a lot of growth mm. methods, but how do you, you how can you utilize AI on the retention side? Hey man, I love that you brought this up. So I feel that it is a profound thing that is introduced uh, to to everybody and, and should be used by everybody. And from a from a retention standpoint, and that AI uh, the AI type deal huge as well, huge as well. Um, being able to sync up different AI tools to, you know, honestly do the reach out for you, do the follow up for you, send the messages for you, uh, cultivate, cultivate the relationships for you is an incredible thing. And what I feel it does is it saves a lot of time, a ton of time. However, 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 <laughs> however, however, you cannot solely rely on AI. And if you rely solely on AI, um, that's a problem. We we were taught, right? People like doing business with people. Okay. And I don't know one damn real estate agent here in Miami, Florida that sells one of these 30 to $40 million homes that I can see right here from the balcony that uses solely AI to close a deal. 100%. No chance. No chance. They're just looking for that magic are, bullet and that path yeah. of loose resistance, right? Yeah. Come on, man. Come on, man. That, that That's not real. Listen, AI is incredible, and I feel that you can indoctrinate it into what it is you got going on. But guess what, y'all? You're also going to have to understand that the talent and the ability to open up your damn mouth and know how to effectively communicate trumps AI any day, any way, any shape. And any oh, without form. a doubt, man. And, 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 and I'll tell you this much, man. If I get a phone call and it's AI as opposed to I get a phone call and it's a real person, you may think they don't know. Man, I know every single damn time, and I don't take the AI call seriously. I need to talk to a human being, especially, especially in the insurance space, because ain't no AI bot need life. Like, 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 it, like it, it, it's not a real situation. So you can use it, and you can put it in your business, deploy it, and save you time. But rely on yourself and rely on the ability, rely on the ability to effectively communicate, man. That's going to be number one. Yeah. And it's like finding that better mousetrap too. Like even what you said, they're selling real estate, right? Like you're down in Miami, some of the best real estate in the country, some of the most luxury real estate, high-end real estate in the country. But what is everybody doing? They're playing in Mm -hmm. a high-end world, an average game. And what do I mean by that? Like they came out of a market where it was like, they could just wake up out of bed and roll money. I could click, put a listing up and it sold. Well, you're not in that market anymore. And then like, that's where the people that put in the work, they got the grit, they do things differently. They got the ingenuity, they got the creativity to show up in a way that other people don't show up will clean house. And that's why I love times of opportunity or times of uncertainty, times Mm -hmm of uh trouble you know i like times of adversity i love those times i don't love them for other people because a lot of people get hurt but i love them for myself because i know that i'm going to show up in a way that other people don't show up and they're not willing to show up and i'm going to get a result like nobody else is going to get and i don't have much competition around me like that so what i would do as a real estate agent in miami right now stop Mm -hmm. selling the damn house and start selling the dream and start selling what they're really buying They're buying the community that they're coming to live in. They're buying the dinner party where everybody's going to come around the table in that house. And they're buying the memories. They're buying the schools, the relationship there's going to be. So if you're a realtor in Miami, what I would do 
is I'd sell all of that. I'd capture that in video, what it's like to live in the community, what it's like to interact in the community, what it feels like to host a dinner party at that table. And if you mm -hmm. sell that thing, the house will sell itself. So it's like, but nobody else is doing that. But if you look at it through that lens, how can you do that in your marketing business? How can you do that in your insurance agency business and operate in a way that nobody else is operating? Take the blinders off and show up different. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's listen. I know a lot of successful real estate agents here, and the most successful ones are the the beacon of information of 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 just like you said, Pinecrest or the school systems or the best networks. Like that, that's all they talk about on their social media. Yeah. Then then, then 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 naturally the people that want to 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 be are, are attracted to that are reaching out and stuff. Oh hey. So I know your real estate agent as well. Do you know any properties that are up or available for, for acquisition? And, and then it's just, I've seen it. I've seen it live. It's true. Oh, no, 100%. If you think about like value-based, like relationship building, staying in front of them, you know, we're talking about putting out good information, being that beacon of info. Um, mm -hmm. When you go in with a sales mentality, hundred percent of the time, it's very polarizing because the answer is either yes or no. Right. And once somebody mm -hmm. says, no, I don't need it right now. Now you're just branded as the salesperson who's going to bug them, who's going to waste their time. And the next time you outreach, if it's another sales outreach, it's like, come on, man, like they're going to exit your communication channel and just stop looking at what you have to offer. So like when you're offering information and you're just out there giving value, you're opening up that door to do business because it's never yes or no. It's yes or pass. Right. It's not like, no, I don't want free information. It's just I don't it's not relevant to me right now. So I'm curious for you, like when you go through your creative process. You're a very creative guy, obviously executive producer mm -hmm. on, on several hit uh, documentaries, mm -hmm. television shows. Like what is your creative process for, for creating value? Is it research-based? Is it community-driven? Are you running polls on social media? Do you just sit down and create it on chat GPT? Like what are you doing in the creative <laughs> no. process? To go like, I want to put out a piece of value. I'm an insurance yeah. agent. Where do, where do you start with that process for yourself? Well, it's got and listen, 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 community based all day, every single day. You know, obviously you're doing, you know, market analysis and, and so on and so forth as far as what drives people and the tendencies of which people move in, why they move in that way and, and whatnot. But it's all community driven. It's all community based. Uh, listen, when you're talking, when you're talking here, I, I'll never forget it, man. I had an opportunity you know, to, to, to be in front of Gary Vaynerchuk several times in a very close like setting and, you know, by the grace of the man above. Hey, awesome. And, 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 and one of the things he said to me, he said to the, he said to the very small group that was in front of him, he said, the, the fastest way to, the fastest way to grow a community is through education and entertainment. And if you can provide education in an entertaining fashion, you completely crush everybody else. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget that. And that was like two years ago. And so everything that we do, everything that we do is like, yo, how can we provide some sort of, of education, but yet how can we be entertaining? Because the entertaining aspect is the thing that allows for you to become memorable. And the education is the thing that allows for you to build clout, clout in essence, certainty that whatever it is that you're about to do, whatever it is that you're doing, currently doing, whatever it is that you've done in the past, you know what it is that you're doing because you know something that somebody else doesn't know that is to be true. And when you can tap into those two things, it's game over. So for an insurance agent who's out there in the marketplace, who's building a personal brand or, or trying to do whatever it is they're doing, you know, you, you got an agency and you want to open up a second location in the tertiary location. Okay, great. Like, like it, it's gotta be, it's gotta be education. And, and, and if you're an agent, it's one form of education It's directly to the person who's going to, who, who you're going to write up. But if it's an agency owner, Bro, it's got to be education on the space itself. It's got to be education on, hey, now I'm in the level of recruitment. Now I'm trying to get as many active agents under me as possible. Your, your, your form of education, yeah, it is directly to the end consumer, but it's also directly to the agent. That's a completely different narrative. That's and I think it's important too to emphasize too the the right education, right? Because all people yeah. are like, oh man, I'm going to training after training. I'm learning after learning and nothing's still happening. Well, it's like, if you're a pilot and then you start getting education on how to drive a tank, you might not be like a very good pilot because you got the wrong data that you're operating off of. And I'll see people do that because we live in a world where information is so accessible 
that it also mm -hmm. becomes addicting that we want to gain more and more info and more and more info until we get to the perfect place where we have so much information. Well, a big part of the actual learning and retention of that information, it comes down to having one, A, the right information that's coming in, and then mm -hmm. B, is actually implementing and putting into action that information. You think about the most basic and rudimentary things that you had to learn in your life, like learning how to walk, learning how to swim, learning how to ride a bike. What didn't you do? You didn't watch a YouTube video on how to freaking walk for 700 damn hours before you took your first step. No, you got up and walked. You fell down a couple hundred times. You kept getting back up, and then you learned how to walk. Same thing with riding a bike and jumping in the pool. You didn't watch like 1,000 hours of YouTube video. You know what? I don't have like the like it, it down perfectly yet, so I'm not going to get in the water. But it might sound funny, but that's the freaking reality of like everybody in business these days. It's like I'm just mm -hmm. trying to get more information. I'm waiting for the perfect time. Well, guess what? The perfect time, the wait in pursuit of that is going to bankrupt your ass. Like you need mm. to freaking get into the flow. You need to start taking action, and it's through that action that you're going to get the learning and that's where that information is going to stick and the implementation of that information is going to be how I apply it and I can wield it into my life to serve me. We have something to reflect on. If you're consuming oh, sure. everything, but you have nothing to reflect on because nothing's been done, then it's hard to modify. It's hard to adjust. Yeah. Part of the process is learning from the wins, learning from the failures and you don't learn how to win. You don't learn how to fail without it's yeah, action. Man. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Man, yeah, hey, listen, this is sauce, right? Hopefully everybody understands that everything that's being said on this thing is absolute sauce. Oh, 100%. Game changer info. Awesome. I love it. Awesome. Well, um, I want to I want to ask you a question about um, uh, specifically going after strategic accounts. Um, this is going to oh, be man. a good lesson, I think, for people on here, whether you own a, a agency selling, uh, you know, residential, whether it's commercial, but when you talk about getting big deals, right? Like most everybody on here has opportunities to go and get higher ticket sales. They have the opportunity to go out and not just sell an auto for a thousand bucks, but go out there and build a network with a big real estate agent. Speaking of, of real estate agents, right? You you get the right real estate agent in the right market as, a, as an insurance agent. They could become 25%, 30% of your new business because they're driving all of their uh, mortgage, all of their uh, buyers on listings, your direct, this is the agent you need to work with or a commercial agent who's, I, I met an agent last year who has all of Mission Tortillas. They insure the entire company and that's their only account. And they're, they're making plenty of money, right? You start to look at those yeah. higher ticket opportunities. See, for a guy like you, I know you know how to work that, but for, for those on here who are maybe like, I want that I don't know if they understand sort of the strategy on maybe working with multiple stakeholders. Um, I saw you make a, go a call to a guy by the name of Larry Claiborne, a uh, massive, <laughs> massive retail furniture guy, multiple yeah. millions of dollars, probably billions. You called the guy 30 times before he picked up the phone and then he took an appointment with you. But can you just speak a little bit to maybe the commercial side, the larger accounts, the higher ticket items? How does that differ from a one call close automotive transaction oh. to I'm going to work a deal for six months. Um, maybe a story, maybe an approach that yeah. somebody can start to like gain some light into that world. Yeah. So uh, stories for days, Andy's part of some of those stories, but what I do have is, is as far as, as far as the approach is concerned, when you're getting into big time entities, big time corporations, you know, you, you got to understand where the, where the big dogs play. And what I mean by that is where they go. And I'm not necessarily talking about physically, but I'm talking about digitally as well. Now, from a physical standpoint, there's a there's a there's a, a strategy that we were taught, right? It's called nesting and, and you nest in an area to where you know these individuals are going. You you nest in an area to where you know these individuals eat or where they get coffee and you continue to show up there, right? You continue to show up day in and day out. There's restaurants, I guarantee you, in your local in your local place that all the top individuals and influential people of your given community go to on a regular basis. Listen, that's when you need to post up if you're going to the damn restaurant. Otherwise, don't go to any damn restaurant. Just continue to work. Like you got to do that. Now, on the contrary, from a digital standpoint, listen, that guy that the Andy had just mentioned, Larry or or Todd Wanick or 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 um. Aggie Choi, remember these names? Bro, they weren't, they weren't, they weren't on Instagram. They weren't, they were not on Facebook, but you know where they were. They were on LinkedIn. Yep. And every big time executive 
If I was a betting man, 55 and above, 58 and above, who leverages social media in one way, shape, or form is on LinkedIn and or Facebook. I'm not going to reach out to people on Facebook. I'm not going to cultivate relationships necessarily on Facebook. I'm going to use Facebook as a follow-up tool to maybe follow them after the fact and like a photo or connect with them after the fact. But that LinkedIn game is the game. So if I'm trying to infiltrate um, Ashley Furniture, I'm going to look up Ashley Furniture on LinkedIn, right? I'm going to look up the organization. I'm going to go to the organization page and I'm going to go to the, go to the, um, it, there's a tab that says uh, workers on LinkedIn who are affiliated with Ashley Furniture. I'm going to click that tab. There's going to be hundreds of people, a list of hundreds of people from store managers, um, regional directors, big time executives, so on and so forth. And I'm going to make my list. I'm going to make my list. I'm going to write down all the names of the people I think are some suit or some some way of, of substance or influence within the organization. And I'm going to connect with those people. I'm going to formally introduce myself via those people. That's why we, that's how we get our big businesses today. LinkedIn is, LinkedIn is incredible. Now, another thing that we do when, when, when you're, when you're connecting with these people, you need to have a newsletter on LinkedIn. The reason why I say you have a newsletter on LinkedIn is not to invite people to the newsletter. Yes, you're going to do that. But did you know that on LinkedIn, when somebody accepts, when somebody accepts your connection, not your follow, not your follow, there's two things, but your connection that automatically they get subscribed to your newsletter, whether they realize it or not. So every single person that says yes, after you built some sort of, of substance, now sees you on your newsletter. We've gotten two deals from our newsletter. Yeah, I pay for our newsletter a lot of money, right? And 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 sometimes there's there's no ROI, but we got ROI with two deals just strictly because of a newsletter on LinkedIn. And then tertiary, right? From a LinkedIn standpoint, LinkedIn is education. LinkedIn is education. LinkedIn is listen, there ain't no twerking on TikTok on LinkedIn. You're not showing up in your bathing suit on LinkedIn. You're not, you're not, you're not. It's a whole different ball game. You Maybe that could be a different that. angle to go at it. <laughs> Working on one day. <laughs> it, may, it may go viral. It may go viral. But, but, but you got, but you got, you, but, but LinkedIn is all education. LinkedIn is all business. It so is 2024. We, we might be able to work on LinkedIn. <laughs> uh, we, hey, we may have something. We may have something. <laughs> but but you got, it's all got to be very strategic education on the service or the craft or the the vertical that you are affiliated with people see that people see that and that's how you foster those relationships then i'm picking up the phone and i'm dialing and i'm i'm I'm, bro, I'm picking up the phone and i'm dialing i'll call a big time ceo introduce myself and say hey man i wanted to introduce myself we just connected on linkedin we're working with like-minded businesses that range anywhere from 50 to 100 million just like you who typically have anywhere from 100 to 200 projects and or SKUs to offer to the purchasing population. Not looking to sell you on this call. My name's Mike. Thank you so much for the acceptance. Oh, hey, thanks so much, Mike. Yeah, boom, 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 click, boom. Now I got you. Little do they know they just opened up the faucet and I'm about to drip on you until I die or until you do, until I close you on a deal. That is the strategy. So bro, you got to nest. Be in the right scenarios and situations with the right people, with the people that get paid, right? Or if I go out to dinner, I'm going to Komodo. I'm not going to Denny's. I'm not going to Denny's, right? And then, yo, yo I love LinkedIn. And what I'm hearing is like, um, the bigger the deal you want, the more time and strategy and investment, you're going to have to take a mindset of maybe a six-month approach or a 12-month approach. Oh. And so if you're conditioning yourself to get into that world and you're used to, I close a deal every two to three days after I pitch it, you're going to lose in that game because you're going to think after four weeks it's failing when you might very well be on the right track, correct? Oh, my God. Listen, bro. <laughs> if there's a ton of heads out of business, it is physically impossible for you to do a one-call close. Every single big-time organization that we're tackling, that we have our eyes on, I'm just thinking 12 to 18 months. Hmm. It's like moving the Titanic. You can't move the Titanic just with a press of a button. It's got to move slow so that's what you're doing bro and it, and it sucks and i hate it and you probably hate it too but damn that check is fat on the end <laughs> no it is and that that's what makes a difference between people with persistence people with grit mm -hmm. people that show up every single day and 
and people that don't. Like the people that don't, you wonder why there's two different types of people in life. You're wondering why there's always the guy or the girl that's woe is me. You're wondering why negative things always happen to that individual. And then you got the other person on the other side of the spectrum. It's like they got the Midas touch. Everything they do, even if they haven't done it before, it turns to gold. Well, keep your eyes on like, what's the difference in the behavior, right? What's the mm. difference in how they show up? What's the difference in the consistency? And you'll have your answer every single time what it is. But we live in this world of instant gratification. Like I can't watch more than seven seconds of a reel now. So when it comes to, you know, building my dreams, I can't take more than seven days. And if I don't see that instant result, well, it's not working. It's not worth it. It's it quit. It, woe is me. It didn't work. On to the next thing. And you yeah. spend your time, you put in the same time as the other guy. You put in the same time as the other girl either way, but you can either spend your time quitting and failing, quitting and failing, quitting and failing before you get any sort of momentum. And you're in this perpetual state of not winning because of it, because you can't stick to anything. Or you can take one thing, keep the main thing, the main thing and show up every single day. And I know I've shared this analogy before, but a good mentor of mine, Tim Story, talks about having the farmer's mentality. What does it take to be a great farmer? Well, the farmer's got to come in. They got to till their land. They got to prepare their land, aka preparing for opportunity, preparing for success. And then once they do that, they plant their seed. But then after they plant their seed, what do they got to do every single day? It doesn't just stop there. It doesn't grow on its own. You got to show up every single day. You got to till the land. You got to fertilize the land and you got to water it every single day. Well, you got to do that through a lens of faith while being consistent because you don't see the results the same way you're not going to see those overnight results in your business. Everything is growing beneath the surface. You never see a sprout pop up above until maybe months and months, maybe even a year down the road. But the person that shows up every single day and waters every single day, they have this gigantic harvest of abundance. And it's almost like it happened overnight. But then what happens to the guy or the girl that comes out and looks at the land and after a few weeks and is like, well, I don't see anything above the surface. You know what? I don't feel good today. I'm not motivated today. I got something else going on today, so I'm not going to water the land. And you know what? I didn't water today and the land looks the same way it did today as it did yesterday. What if I just don't water it again for the week? They could have been three weeks away from getting that same freaking harvest but now they fell short and by not watering it one day or one week, they killed the crop. So everything that they put in and then they're starting over again and it's like, woe is me, it didn't work. Well, no, you didn't work. You didn't show up. You didn't stay consistent. You didn't have faith. Like that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. And people don't want to hear it because people want everything that is in the winner circle, but without putting in the work that it takes to get inside of the winner circle. And that's the truth and the reality. And you got to understand you're going to freaking work a hard life either way. Like you're going to put in that 10 years either way of hard work, or it's going to be really hard work of failure after failure after failure with no results at the end. If you keep operating that way, or if you show up through that right lens and you put in the work over and over and over again, now that hard work is going to turn into some sort of fruit that I can tell you after that, it gets a lot easier, right? It's still hard mm. work, but it's a lot more fulfilling. It's a lot more easier and it shifts and shapes the trajectory of your life and the person that you become. Wow. 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 Well, hey, one thing we had a live example of that that just happened, the Olympics. I mean, listen, uh, you know, I, I happen to know a lot of the athletes that were competing in the Olympics. Do you know how much effort and work goes into preparing yourself for 45 seconds for four years of preparation. Oh, 100 percent Like, 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 like it's it, it's just it's just absolutely, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Like, like there is no, there is no right away reward. Like we're talking, we're not talking days and weeks, we're talking four years, four years of brute force and effort for 45 seconds. But when they get that goal, shout out to Casey, shout out to to Kevin, shout out to my guys and girls that I know that got gold, silver, and bronze medals, but have worked their entire lives just to compete on a worldwide stage for 45 seconds. So shout out to them because when I see that, mm -hmm. it, it, you kind of get emotional in the sense of, man, like that's what it is, man. Like that's the game. And that's the same situation as it relates to, to business, man. Like it, 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 it's a tough game yep. and you will not see a lot of wins and there will be a lot of back-to-back -back days where you're thinking, why the hell am I doing this? There is no success. This sucks. 
There's no money coming in, whatever the case may be. But I guarantee you, when you're on that big time stage and you perform and you get that gold medal, you get something hung around your neck. Watch me now. Watch me now. And there's no substitution when it comes to participation trophies that will anywhere near substitute that. And you see people will try to try it. The thing that kills me is like you see the award on somebody's desk that said, oh, I'm all best in city. And it's the award. Well, like, yeah. I got that same email. And for $79.95, I could have bought that same trophy and <laughs> best in city and put it on my desk. And they got a dopamine hit off of it. And like, oh, everybody's congratulating him. But it's like, it's like a Pagazi. It's like this fake win. And if you keep chasing chasing fake wins all your life, you're never yeah. really gonna win. Like you might get like some mm. resemblance of dopamine hits and things like that and feelings here and there, but you're never truly gonna be in the winner circle. So like don't allow somebody to disguise like what winning looks like because the formula hasn't mm. changed over a hundred years, even though the environment that we live in today where everybody needs a trophy. Like that has changed, but the formula to truly win has not changed. It's always remained the same, and you still need to do the same things to stand inside the winner's circle. You will never see a trophy on my desk costing seven ninety five. I'll tell you. No, that. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> but yeah, oh, I think we're, we're we're a little bit over time here. But it's great talk, great dialogue. Yeah. I'd like to say, like, what other final words of wisdom do you have for the audience if you could leave them with one thing like keeping the main thing the main thing and one thing that they could go out with to win in their business mr shill what would that be hey the fastest way to crush mind and market share is personal brand yep so make sure make sure make sure that if, if, if you're not doing anything else you're you're building, a, you're building a personal brand because that's a job in and of itself. That is the meet and greet. That is the fact finding. That is overcoming the objections. That surpasses setting the appointment. That is the demonstration. That is the write up, and that is the close, all wrapped in one. When you can develop a uh, an effective personal brand, so yo yo, a lot of your eggs need to be on that. It makes life a whole lot easier, and life will be a whole lot, a whole lot hell of harder if you don't do it. So that's the. The first thing and the second thing is I'm just I'm just uh, humbled at the opportunity to be here. I know there was a, a great conversation. I know I know you got something from this thing, and if you didn't get something yeah, yeah. from this thing, man, you're you're doing. You need to go back and watch yeah, it yeah. again because yeah, you know you know we get something out of this. <laughs> I'm kidding, but, but hey, no, it was it was great. Uh, it was great. Uh, it was great being here today, man. And and um, anything that's needed, you know. Oh. Yeah, and I guess tell everybody too while we got you here. Like, how can people work for you? How can like they reach out to get you know service from your company if they need it? What's the best way to to get in touch with Mister Mike Schill? Just hey, listen, this is beautiful because Dave says this. Keep the main thing, the main thing. I can tell you twenty different ways to get in contact with, but I'm only going to tell you one. Just reach out and shoot a follow or or shoot a DM via Instagram. It's at M I K E. So that's Mike Schill. S is in Sam. C is in Cap. H as in hats, I L L underscore at Mike Shill underscore. And anything that's needed, just reach out. A follow does a wonder, a wonder amount of things. And we also have a uh, circle community that we just started as it relates to effective communication, personal brand, and sales for entrepreneurs. Love it. And um, we actually have some uh, real estate, or not real estate, but um, agency owners in that as well. If that's something that makes sense for you, shoot us a DM. But Nonetheless, man, the most important thing is that y'all win. So go crush the day, crush the marketplace, and create your own economy because if you don't, someone else will, and that someone else ain't, ain't got your back. Ain't got your back. So, Boom. Absolutely love it. So This has been an incredible show. I know anybody that's watching, if you're watching live, if you're watching the replay on this, there was just nugget after nugget. There was fire. You know, Make sure to watch it again. Take good notes and take action, folks. Take action because all of this information is just what it is. It's just information without implementation and without taking massive action. 10x massive action, as Grant Cardone would say, where Mr. Mike Schill and Andy Arter came from. And folks, this has been another episode of Ask the Experts. It was an incredible time. Mike, thank you so much for coming on, man. Thank you for pouring in. Thank you for showing up and then just delivering in such a big way to our audience today. And thank each and every one of you loyal listeners that come on to our show every single day, whether you're, again, you're watching in the live or you're watching the rerun. And we will look forward to seeing you next week, same time, same channel on another episode of Ask 
the experts.